Well, hello. I want to welcome you to my review of the Parker Dual Fold. And you might be saying, that doesn't look like a Parker Dual Fold. You just wait. This is an old one. So if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And if you'd like to talk about this pen in particular, you know, maybe some other new and old comparisons of various models of pens, please feel free to leave a comment down below. You know, maybe there's some themes about, excuse me, about new versus old models of pens that we can see. So let's look at this one. So this is a Parker Dual Fold. It's actually in the jade finish, which I think is gorgeous. You can see in the barrel that there's a little bit of staining. In fact, let's just take a look at it instead of me sitting beside it. A little bit of staining because it does hold a latex sac, latex off-gasses, and that discolors the celluloid. But you can see in the cap the color it was originally meant to be, which I think I already told you is the jade finish. Little hole, breather hole. Not breather hole. Hole so it doesn't suck ink out when you uncap it. Uh, in, in way... Was I lied to? That's not an arrow clip. Well, Parkers don't have to come with arrow clips. Here's a, another Parker Duo Fold pencil, also without an arrow clip. And yes, I know, some Parkers, most Parkers, especially nowadays, come with arrow clips, but this one does not. Uh, you can also see the Ebonite, I'm gonna go with Ebonite, the Ebonite has faded at that end, but not at this end. So was somebody keeping it in their pocket and this end faded? I don't know the story. That's part of the fun of vintage pens. You don't know their story. This end looks like it got set on a hot stove, <laughs> uh, but you unscrew it. It's a button filler. Parker didn't like to do, uh, oh, the little spring came out. Uh, Parker didn't like to do uh, lever fillers because there was that risk as, you know, you're putting it in your pocket I wore, I, I should be just wearing this t-shirt, but I, I wore a button-down shirt just for this video. Um, but you're putting it in your pocket like this, and whoop, the lever catches on you, your pocket, and psh, next thing you know, you have a cap full of ink. So it's a button filler. That's okay. Unscrews. Ebonite section, and then a gold nib. Which hopefully you can read. Oh, there we go. See, I knew I put that second light in there for a reason. If I just figure out how to use it correctly, yeah. So, I was looking for a date code, code on it. I couldn't find one, and it's possible back then they didn't do date codes, but there is some stuff written on it. You know, Parker. That looks kind of datey over there, but it's just so faint, and it could be G-E-O-S Parker. Parker Dual Fold, made in the USA, which back then it would have been. So, yeah, I don't know much about date codes, but Parker is one of the brands you can get an idea when the pen was made, if you can find the date code. I think I said there's a latex sack inside of it. This, if you look at this, this is what they would they called the streamline model, as near as I could figure out. You know, they, the original duo fold may have looked, okay, you're about to get a preview of a pen that wasn't going to come out for a long time on my channel, but I just couldn't resist here. The original dual fold may have looked something like this, maybe a more 1920s version of it. Uh, most of the pens at that time were available in any color, as long as it was black hard rubber. Um, but there'd been some experiments done where they made this orange hard rubber. This isn't orange hard rubber. This is, of course, acrylic, because this is a new dual fold. Uh, but anyway, um, that, turn, that really put Parker on the map. It really set them apart back then. Because, hey, let's buy the pen that's not black. Uh, so they came out in 1921. Uh, by 1922, they'd added the Dual Fold Junior, which is mine. I, I don't know how the vintage Dual Fold would have compared in size. By the way, I just know that it's a lot larger. So I don't know if the vintage Dual Fold is this exact size. Uh, mine's a Junior. And then in 1929, they added, they sort of rounded off the corners and put a little more tapering on instead of making it more flat and called it the Streamline. So, uh, anyway.
anyway, I am curious to see what happens with this ink. The ink in it is a Iron Gall ink. It's a um, KWZ Iron Gall Mandarin. And I did notice that the color yesterday when I was writing with it came out very uh, oxidized looking. And I don't know if that's the pen or the latex sack or what it is. So I don't know what color you're about to see when I do this writing sample. What is coming out is a very wet writer, much wetter than it was writing last night when I was writing my notes on this pen. I'm not sure why it felt the need to write so wet today. You know, I wrote my notes yesterday and they are not as wet. But it's still not coming out the nice orange color that Mandarin comes out and then it oxidizes to a nice, nice even brown. But anyway, I don't care. Let's look at how, ooh, how it flexes. Actually, what I'm going to do just to get it to write the way it normally writes, there's a blob of ink on the back of the nib. I'm just going to dab that off. Perhaps it got jostled as I was carrying it downstairs. Okay, now it's right more like it did last night. Again, not the Mandarin color I'm familiar with, but whatever. So it writes a... Uh, it's got a decent amount of line variation. I, I, I have some pens with, you know, I'd call them wet noodle nibs. They're called central pens. This isn't it. But I'd say it's flexible. It's definitely more than just soft. Uh, let's see, wetness and flow. Well, now I'm seeing a little more hint of the orange that I'm used to. Still not there yet. And it, like I said, it dries a lovely brown. Uh, wetness and flow. We'll do a smear test. Let's do it with no pressure first. Meh. And then put some pressure. Yeah. So, pretty wet. Let's try some reverse writing. A little scratchier, but not bad, and I'd call that an extra fine. All right, let's do a longer form writing with a quote. All right, so uh, one of the things I feel like I should mention before I give my final comments on this pen is how exactly a button filler works. So uh, I want you to use some imagination. I had to repair this one. In fact, this is the first but first or second, one of the earliest button fillers I ever replaced. Anyway, we'll just close off the bottom of the barrel. Here's a nib, feed, all that junk. Uh, what you have attached to the feed is a rubber sack and you have to compress that sack in order to draw up ink so on top what you have is a button that pushes down on a kind of a spring that's attached to a rigid bar and as I push on the spring it pushes this way against the sack and that's what enables the ink to be drawn up. Uh, lever fillers do basically the same thing only instead of a button on top pushing on the spring it's lever on the side pushing at it from the side. So I think it's kind of a neat way to fill a pen. Um, you know, I'm totally good with the fact that modern pens aren't filled that way, but I think it is a neat solution. And it was kind of fun to 
restore this pen because it's a pretty one. You know, I, I ended up buying a new, oh, I wouldn't call it a J bar, a new pressure bar for it. And I had to resack it. The, the sack just came out in crunchy little pieces. So uh, that was fun. And boy, was this a bugger to put back together. But I finally did it. And uh, very happy with it. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, I do know why I don't write with it more often. Because pens with a latex sack are a little more time consuming to clean out. So uh, I always think in terms of, do I really want to ink it up and then clean it out later? Ooh. But I like it. I, you know, very pretty, very good writer. So anyway, hope that was interesting. Uh, with with vintage pens, I don't think about if something happened to it, would I buy a new one? Because you never know if you'd be able to anyway. I just enjoy that I have a little piece of history. And, you know, the fact that the this finial is all faded just tells me a little bit about the story. Like I said, it tells me that the original owner kept it here. And it was in the sun a lot. So I think this was a pen that was used a lot. And the fact that this other finial is somewhat melted, I just picture those old wood-burning or coal-burning stoves that people used to use in their kitchen. I could just picture, you know, whoever owned it talking with it and setting it briefly on the top of the stove. I'm making all that up, of course, because I have no clue, but that's the story I'm going with. And all your vintage pens come with a story, whether you know it or not. So... Thank you for watching. If videos like this interest you, I'd invite you to subscribe where I talk about fountain pens both new and old at all price points. If you'd like to talk about the Parker Dual Fold or pen restoration or any of the versions of the Parker Dual Fold that are out there, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, I thank you. Damn, burn it. The, the battery just ran out on that camera. Um, <laughs> so uh, that has happened to me like three times recently. Anyway, so I thank you for watching, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.